Welcome to the Practice Podcast, conversations probing the nature of practice. I'm your host, Dave Firon. Now, one more thing. <laughs> That's the name of Lizzie Freudman's strategic marketing firm. One more thing. Lizzie is the founder and basically the principal principal of this very interesting firm with a very strong set of values. And guess what? They're Lizzie's values. So her firm expresses her intellect, her curiosities, her imagination, and most importantly, how she wants to be in the world, the benefit she wants to create in the world. So she's uh, telling us something about practice, which, it's, which is that it's personal in the best kind of way. So here is Lizzie Freudman. Well, I have a plate, and I have a fork, and I have a nice little slice of humble pie. <laughs> Can I give you a fork too? Or because folks, I'm being an ass, ass about this, but I we had a great conversation, Lizzie Freudman and I uh, recorded a couple of weeks ago, and it was a great conversation. But there were some pieces of it that uh, you know I didn't have good con- good thought and control over. So, but I want to tell everyone before we start, the reason these have really been so much fun for many, many episodes, this would be 146, is that we don't know what's going to come up. It's a conversation. This pie doesn't taste very good, Lizzie, but welcome welcome back. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much, Dave. And thank you. I don't, I don't think it's you that needs to eat humble pie. I think it's me. Um, the reason that I asked Dave for a do-over here, um, and he graciously agreed, is because in our first conversation, we talked so much about so many different things. And one thing that I did a not so great job of explaining was what I do in my business. And one of my 2022 goals is to do a better job of that. So I saw myself do a mediocre to okay job and um, asked for a chance to do it better. And being the gracious person that Dave is, he let me practice my practice by giving me a do over. So thank you. No, I, and I think you're right to the point. Uh, already so i'm gonna put some whipped cream on the pie right away uh that there is such a challenge to be able to say what you do off the cuff on camera all kinds of ways and uh i was only hearing part of it when i crafted that that introduction and it was and yet i remembered and i went back to the old episode and I know why I first met you through one of your clients who thought of the world of you, that there was a whole lot more there. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, I mean, we can, what I do is strategic marketing. So I work with people okay. to help them identify the value proposition that is unique to their business, the audience that will benefit the most from getting that product or service, and how to reach that audience whether it's through social media or paid radio ads or podcasts or whatever it is. Um, As far as I'm concerned, if you're like, you know, building a pyramid and like at the tippy top is like a cool, fun, like contest giveaway or whatever, all of the layers underneath that cool, fun contest giveaway need to be strong and support it and the fundamental underlying like base level is what are you selling what is its value and who needs it and why and then how do you get it to them so that is what i do i work with business owners i work with entrepreneurs i work with intrapreneurs i work with people who are pivoting or looking to expand into new markets and I help them 
identify what value they bring and who needs that value. So I don't know if that's like 100% my best elevator pitch, but I think it's an improvement over last time. And I like to say I put the fun in fundamentals because that's what it is. And I think it's really fun. I think that's a, uh, that's a brilliant point because I'm thinking, ooh, what's that prize on the top, you know, <laughs> being a guy and all that. And, uh, and I'm thinking, okay, if that's the foundation, the fundamental that you work on, but the pyramid has a few more layers, uh, what happens to those? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, you want to do market research. Market research is another layer. So it's like mm -hmm. my hypothesis is that the value of your product is X. Let's actually talk to consumers and see if it is. Okay. Um, my, my other hypothesis is that they're going to respond best to this product if it's delivered on a podcast ad or if they can see it um, in a digital like video or whatever it is. So you, you market test, you make hypotheses, and then there's um, a whole different skill set of paid advertising. So, you know, the marketing strategy dictates, are you going to pay somebody to run Facebook ads for you, to run Google ads, to run LinkedIn ads? Should you hire someone to do PR? Um, all of those things are built upon those, those fundamentals. And mm -hmm. then if you're going to be on social media, do you want to do organic social media, creating posts about like, you know, photos of what's going on in your office or like, you know, that's a great, you know, if you if you run a ski resort, obviously you want to post a million organic photos of what you see out your window every day. That's right. But if you're selling tires, maybe you don't, but maybe you do. Maybe you have a really unique voice. So um all those things are built upon the, the fun fundamentals that I help people articulate, expand upon, and then execute against. And finally, at the tippy top, you get the fun little contest or the you know free ice cream giveaway or whatever it is. <laughs> or pie. <laughs> yeah, I love pie. We'll have pie. Humble or not, I love it. Uh, I'm thinking of what of those layers, not layers, or maybe the pyramid is a little less layered and a little bit more. We can, um, we can make it a cake if you want. Yeah, it's, it's maybe it's a little more like that, a little more uh, integrated, but you're one person. You're Lizzie Freudman, and your company is called? One More Thing. Yeah, One More Thing. Yeah. All that other work, market research, testing uh, out, you know, focusing with certain potential customers, all of that. You're not a firm, are you? I, 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 how do you get those jobs done? Well, so I do know how to do a lot of them. I mean, you are a firm, but the, do, and a lot of people do, do a lot, lot without, it. you know, by um, sourcing out the work. And, but. Yeah, and I do work with different partners, collaborators, um, mm -hmm. paid ads, for example, is something that I know enough about, but don't, but look, you know, the technology changes so regularly that I would want to hire a vendor for paid advertising. Um, I certainly do not do graphic design. I can, um, set up a couple of, you know, simple website things, but usually if I have, I need to have a model to do it, to replicate it. Um, I'm a great copywriter. And I'm a great long form writer. Um, and I understand enough about search engine optimization not to not to make a mess of it. But I do, you know, have a broad network of people who are experts and love to collaborate with people who know more than I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I know one of the things that we talked about that you were really interested in in our last conversation um, was my B Corp certification. Mm -hmm. And um, the B Corp network is always, or almost always the first place I go to when I need a collaborator because I want to work with people who share my values, who care about the environment, who care about social justice, who, um, prioritize running a, a good and ethical business. And that that is 
core to the way that I operate. And so it's always, you know, great to be able to partner with people like that. I think that's, and, a, by the way, um, a, a, a remarkably good differentiation. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as I kind of was burbling about, there's so, so, so many small businesses, many do a lot of what you have already described they do or claim to do it. And um, if I were thinking, okay, who could I recommend? Who could I send someone to, to, to do what you do? Among other things, I would say, by the way, <laughs> do you know what a B Corp is? Which is, why don't you define that for the listener? Because so I know what it is. A B Corp, um, there's a B Corp and a benefit corporation. One of them is a legal designation. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, um, not every state al allows for that legal designation. Um, there's a lot of confusion about it. But if you have a B Corp certification or you're incorporated as a benefit corporation, you've made a commitment basically to get third party auditing on the the way you run your business and you know how much how much environmental impact you have could you do a better job on that do you uh prioritize workers rights you pay people a living wage or a fair wage are there um profit share programs if you can't afford to do it uh how do you think about stakeholder value which is a really different paradigm from the one that is taught in many business schools about creating shareholder value. Yeah, Friedman's uh, book is still being read. <laughs> uh, yeah, so stakeholder value includes the shareholders, but it mm -hmm. doesn't only include the shareholders. It includes mm -hmm. the workers. It includes the people who are local to your center of operations. So for example, if, if you're creating like great value, great returns for your for your shareholders, but in doing so, you're polluting the local environment and, you know, making it dangerous for people to live there. You're not doing such a great job of thinking about all your stakeholders. Um, and to, so it's local community, larger community. And of course, like the climate, which impacts all of us <laughs> is, is another one. So, you know, we think about stakeholders, everybody who, who, um, what could or should care about how the business succeeds and how the business operates. Mm -hmm. So that is sort of the paradigm. So this network that you can go to of other people who have been is essentially certified as B as a yeah. B Corp. Yeah. Yeah. They may be doing a, a bunch of things, but in particular, the group that would be yours would be the ones you might be able to source out certain parts of a project. And you can be confident then that they're not going to abuse or do anything that you wouldn't do. Right. So that's an extension of you. Yeah, right. It's, it feels really, it's really important to me. Um, mm. And also, one of the great things about the B Corp Network and this like B Corp infomercial that I'm running here is uh, okay. when people have devoted their life to this kind of work, you meet people who look at a marketing problem with a totally different lens. There you um, go. So there's a really fascinating woman, um, Alyssa, Alyssa Her, based I think out of North Carolina or South Carolina. I always get them confused. Uh, and she runs a website development company that is designed to make websites that are ADA accessible, that meet all of the um, regulatory guidelines, and which change um, regularly based on, you know, different research and new technology and so on and so forth. Um, I always recommend her as a developer, or at least a consultant to bring on to a web development project, because I think considering, you know, the, the lack of attention to the giant marketplace of people who have disabilities and making online products accessible to them is not only a ethical failing, but also a sales failing or a marketing failing. I was going to say, um, let's, 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 
we we who are not perfect in life have money in our pockets and our others are supporting our needs so I, I, I get it. I get it a lot. And uh, so it's just a wonderful picture that I'm picking up. Uh, not everyone looks at a business uh, potential like someone who has subscribed to what you have. Let's get back to you because that base yeah. uh, is so important. I think what you do when you start a conversation with someone who's might hire you is to tell them a bit about yourself, which you've done, assume that they've already checked you out on your webpage and perhaps know some people who know you, but then you will, I think form a bond bond or am I projecting too much? No, you're because you're not. once that's formed now, they're going to let you into who they really are and what they really want to do. And, and otherwise, you know, they're going to be, well, tell me what to say. Well, say this. No, you want them to be yeah. able to say, I'll, you know, I'll open myself up totally about this business uh, that I'm trying to revive or start but not to anyone. So, you know, you make a really interesting point and it's a point that's been on my mind a lot recently. Uh, one of the things that we talked about in our previous conversation that I do think is worth revisiting is how challenging the pandemic was for a lot of small mm -hmm. businesses, but was for me mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways and how just the general anxiety about the pandemic um, caused me to be, I think, a little bit more timid or trepidatious about the projects I took on. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say the pandemic is over, but I would say we're in a different phase. And, you know, my mind, my mentality about it now is that, like, I can't wait till thing, things are different or over. I have to, I have to, like, move forward now. Mm -hmm. And that's meant a little bit of changing my business model a little bit um, mm -hmm. to, I feel like I've been like leaving some money on the table in some respects by wanting every client I have to have a really deep relationship with and to like understand the nuances of their product and to be able to give them all of the, you know, attention and insight that I possibly can, mm -hmm. um, which is not always um, what every client wants or needs, uh, depending on where they are in their business. Uh -huh. And also, right, like, so not everybody wants a strategist for, you know, a monthly retainer. Maybe they want, like, someone with less experience in one or someone with expertise in only market research, but they need a couple of hours of strategy. Sure. Um, and so... I, and and once I build those relationships, it's it's very difficult. I find it very challenging and um, to keep boundaries, right? To keep it from just like, you know, I have a million ideas and I really want to talk <laughs> about it all the time. And um, <laughs> yeah, I can I can feel it. And you know, so another one of my twenty twenty goals in in addition to do a better job of explaining what I do is also to not do marketing work for free. Um, and that is a goal that I sometimes fail at. I would say, you know, at least twice a week, I fail at it, uh, <laughs> because somebody tells me something and I just can't resist the puzzle. And I say, show me your data, show me your data. Tell me what you're doing. Let, let me, let's turn this around. And so, you know, at least once or twice a week, I, I do a call where I'm like, look, let me tell you how to fix this just because I, I. I can't resist. It's you. Damn I'm, it. It's you. And and it's I'm walking you. this this fine line right now about how much of this is a strength and how much of this is a weakness. These are really like existential questions. And, yeah, and sure. I'm giving you my most honest, most vulnerable feedback on what the experience of the past couple of years has been like for me because um you deserve it and anyone who listens to this deserves that but it has been really challenging um mm -hmm. so and and because i know my tendency when i'm working with someone in a close relationship 
on a retainer basis really to just dive in as much as I can um, is to say like, well, that that'll, <laughs> I, that tends to be me putting in all kinds of extra hours and not getting compensated for those extra hours. So, you know, if I'm not, if I'm not going to cure myself of the ability of the like need to, to do that, to earn the A plus every single time, I need to find a way to make other money. So Aha. Um, now you're on to something. So I've just introduced, and you can't even do it on my website yet because I haven't quite figured that part out. But if anyone listen, listening to this and wants to do this, um, you, Dave will include my email, I'm sure. Um, like single, single consulting hours or 90 minute sessions where we talk about, you know, some of the core marketing things that trip people up either in early in their stage of launch or in a later stage where they're just feeling like there's a disconnect. Something's not working. Something's not working. And, um, and I felt totally frightened about doing this model because per your conversation, I think that some of the value that I offer comes from the relationship that I bring and my real um, interest, my genuine interest in understanding each of my clients and all of their consumers too. Yeah. So, which is not something it can do in an hour and a half or two hours, but at the same time, you know, there are people who could benefit from two hours of time with me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Next steps. And so it's taken me a while to believe that myself. Um, <laughs> And it's taken me, you know, a, lo- a while to figure out how to implement that process. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still still struggling to do the math um, mm-hmm. in the sense of how much time does it take to close one of those clients? How much time? How yeah. much money does it You're take selling to two hours and it takes you 20 hours to, to sell two. Yeah. You got to watch um, a lot to work out. There's a lot to work out. There's a lot to work out. And then there's also my own, um, I'm working with a client now. You know, they paid for 90 minutes of my time and I keep sending emails with other ideas. And I'm like, <laughs> like if I, if I now run the math on how much time I've spent thinking of ideas. Two or, cents an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Like I've deflated, like I've, I've my, my hourly rate has gone remarkably down, but at the same time, like I don't ever want to not share an idea. So this is a very big struggle. Um, it's a, it's a tug of war. Um, it's a tug of war, uh, because I don't think there's anything wrong with being generous with my time and my ideas and not about being wrong. No. And helping people where I can. Um, although I have been asked, but why did you go to business school if you want to do this as a nonprofit? Um, but I I don't think there's anything anything wrong with being generous with what skills I have. But at the same time, I do think it's wrong. And I feel very sad. And I feel very unhappy when... I'm taken advantage of. And that, that does happen. Um, it's happened a couple of times in notable ways mm-hmm. that have been, you know, shocking and hurtful and terrible. Um, and I don't want that to happen anymore. So, well, it, I don't want to sound like crass old granddad here. Because I could be your grandfather uh, by age. Um, yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, and I think when we did have the other conversation, we talked about the thickness of our skin. It will happen, but it, you will more quickly turn them into lessons learned and maybe even teach a lesson with it. But uh, that piece, I think, because uh, there are so many users out there, even the ones that don't look like them, they will. So that piece is there. But what I'm what I'm picking up on is uh, being able to separate a 90 minute, call it a gig for a moment, just to set it out there versus really providing a, a lot of substantial forethought, afterthought and all the rest. The, 
the big the big tickets would be well worth it. But the 90 minutes, now some people turn those into uh, essentially an elevator, or, or just quick and dirty, bam, 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 it's all scripted out, send your check by Tuesday. Uh, there are some things, however, as I learned you so far, that you have a lot of depth of thought about that could be a 90 minute, it could be a video, it could be, you know, Tuesday afternoon at two is call Lizzie, bring your questions, yeah. you know, give, give us, you know, there are ways you can sell what you know, not just the process of knowing. You get my point? Yeah, yeah. No <laughs> is no. Knowing is the other piece that you love to do because that's what mainly what people need. It's just that they don't necessarily pay for it right away or maybe never, but the, and, the, you're, you're, you, you have an excellent education. Thank you. Uh, you didn't choose to go to my alma mater, but otherwise you went to a pretty good school was an undergraduate. I think it was Brown, wasn't it? <laughs> it's Brown for undergrad and I got two master's degrees at Tulane. There you go. Wow. So, so, and here's another thing, right, um, that I think about a lot when it comes to not working for free or for bargain basement prices is that I have those credentials behind me and there are lots of talented people who don't. And if, and if I don't, we're doing this interview on International Women's Day. So, you know, like it's only fitting to talk about the wage gap here. So if I'm not going to say, pay me this much money here are my fancy pieces of paper. Um, how is someone who doesn't have those fancy people pieces of paper going to be able to advocate if I don't, you know, help clear the path for them? That's right. That's right. Um, and that is a, that is like that's another B Corp kind of mentality thing. Is that when we when we demand, you know, fair price for our intellectual or creative work which is so relative, right? So like we have to internally un decide what that value is. That's right. And if we, you know, allow somebody to say like, nah, convince me it's worth that much, I'm not sold. Um, and then, and say like, okay, I'll charge you less. Then, then everybody who comes after us has to continue to face that hurdle. It doesn't, it doesn't create any kind of systemic no. Change. no. Uh, and I'm not like egocentric enough to think that like by deciding in 2022 that I'm not going to work for free, what I'm doing is like of high value changing changing the world for everyone who comes after me. But mm -hmm. I do feel like I'm I'm doing my best to not make it harder for them. Um mm -hmm. And not make it harder for my contemporaries who don't have the same fancy pieces of paper or who aren't white or who, you know, don't have the ability to take on any kind of work on their family or whatever to relationship build, don't have the network. So like, it's, it is something that I factor into the way that I run my business is when I create my pricing, my packaging, my opportunities, am I doing so in a way where the reason someone would hire me is because I'm the best at what I do and not because I, the cheapest or the easiest to get to or whatever else, you know, like I, I really, as much as I can want to be hired on my merits and I want to make it so that other people can be too. Now uh, here's, yes. That's my answer. Uh, you 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 uh, are the well along in being the best at what you do, and because of your drive and your intellect and your goodness, you're only going to get better. I hope That's, you're right. That and I, I I'm convinced of it already. But here's the other piece. What are you going back to? What you started with? What are you actually going to do for that business client? You're going to help them, A, stay in business. And the pandemic, pandemic has certainly shown us that that's not an easy, five easy pieces. 
you're going to help them stay in business. But what, almost anyone can somewhat convince them to try something different so they'll maybe keep a customer or get a few customers. But what if they want to grow? And I don't just mean the old fashioned grow, you know, bottom line, uh, top line, all the jargon. They want to be people, whether it's a teeny business or a larger business who are growing because of what they do. They feel better about themselves. They feel really excited about what happens with their product and service. They get better, a hell of a lot better. And you were a catalyst for that because you can't stay there forever. And, and you have to furnish their leaders, however, with something that very few people are going to get by paying the low price, taking it easy. And that's not so. And so it's real hard sometimes to find that who are those companies that want to grow? Well, some of them will already have become benefit corporations. That's a clue. And they want to grow. And uh, beyond that, we're in the moment here where all the big corporations that used to be, you know, get the hell out of the way, we're coming through, whatever we leave behind, tough, poopy. <laughs> you know, they're stepping, they're, they're realizing now that they cannot be associated with Russia, for example. So the big oil companies are saying, we're, we're pulling out. The big card companies, all the bigs, the ones that were so big that they didn't think they could fail. So there's a touch of humble pie being nibbled on by those leaders. Yeah. But, I mean, and but I, beyond them, and I, you know, this old, the old sermon, sermon, but beyond them, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people men, uh, who are in businesses, a lot of them right here in Connecticut. They've hung on. Now they think that there's something that else they can be doing to grow, but they need to get into the guts of what they do and refresh it, and they need what you can offer them. So under my contact find them. Hmm? Um, so, yeah. Um, Don't have much more time on the clock here, because, <laughs> but, but I, I just, I just you, used up the last 10 minutes with my harangue. No, no. I mean, I mean, you know, you have my contact information. Share it with everybody. I will. Uh, but, <laughs> I will for anyone but, I like. Um. Yeah, you know, we've seen a couple of really interesting inflection points and changes that sort of some companies have really had a, an actual rethinking of what diversity, equi equity, and inclusion looks like. Mm -hmm. Some people are still thinking about it from the C-suite down instead of from the ground level up, which is what, I mean, I really think that the C-suite down is an ineffective way of you know, putting together a diversity, equity, and inclusion plan because guess who's in the C-suite? Not, not the least represented, most underserved people, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, what what does equity look like at a, any specific company is something that I think requires the input of the whole community, but or the community of that company, but. Um, I think that we're going to see a, a lot more of that in the sense that I hesitate to use any of these terms because they're flashpoints and I feel like the buzzwordiness of them kind of detracts from the point that I want to make. We, we talk about call out culture and, and um, you know, like how people were taping up the swoosh on their Nikes when um, yeah. they didn't like Nike support of Black Lives Matter or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and we've recently seen this whole um, thing with Spotify where Neil Young didn't want his mm -hmm. art on the same platform as COVID misinformation. Um, and, you know, everybody wants to weigh in on that. And I do think that on some level, that's uh, really good in the sense that I do think it's a little bit okay for corporations to be cognizant of the fact that too many bad moves is going to get them canceled. Although I don't like that word because I think it really underestimates or it really underrepresents, actually it's a better word, um, the opportunity that people had to do better in the lead up to whatever 
event it was that got them quote canceled and that um there are definitely like trolls out there who like love a pylon and who oh, yeah. oh, like yeah. who like sit around on twitter waiting for someone to like yeah. sneeze in the wrong direction and then like they're canceled they're terrible let's go through every post that they've made throughout their history every magazine ad from the 80s and like mm-hmm. find things that are no longer appropriate and you know call them out for all those things um mm-hmm. i i i think but i do think that the most the majority of people who would stop giving money to a company because of a mistake a misstep etc would would do it genuinely would hopefully and maybe i'm being naive and i know of one friend of mine who will tell me that i'm being hopelessly naive um would do it genuinely because giving money to that business is not something that they can find that they can stomach at this point um and not because they have any desire to join it you spend enough time on the internet you see that there's like a stylistic difference like being canceled is like the mob comes for you and tells you like tape up your nike swoosh let's burn them let's burn this book like let's whatever it is and then being called out means like having all of your mistakes publicly discussed um but then there's other term which i prefer although i do think now it's it's become buzzy in a way that almost uh defeats the meaning of it like undermines the meaning is to be called in so instead of saying dave you really messed up get out of here Mm -hmm. i'm gonna say dave i don't understand why you said that Mm -hmm. come to this table and tell me about it so Mm -hmm. that we figure it out personally i'm I'm a big believer in call in, um, call in culture, whatever, you know, whatever the buzzy term for it this time is because, and and that's not to say that like, I don't draw a line, like, you know, at some point you can invite someone to talk, to talk it through and to learn and, and to try to learn from them and to try to offer them opportunity to learn from you. And they're resistant to it for whatever reason. And, you know, it's okay to be like, I don't want to do business with you. Dave, now I'm really going to ask you to leave the room. Thank you for trying. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, and not waste any more time on that, right? But, but, I mean, you're an educator. You understand what a teachable moment is. Mm-hmm. And, true. and I think that we've just been living through just every day <laughs> the past couple of years. has been yeah. a teachable moment. It's and, like coming at us like. Uh... Yeah. Star Wars. Um, But I would I would suggest, though, that there's an aspect of what you say strategic uh, going back. So we're kind of circling this together here. The notion that one goes in and sets up a strategic marketing plan. Yes. But that doesn't mean then that the strategizing ends. No. And particularly in the kinds of unbelievable turbulence that every individual, every business is is encountering moment by moment. So if I were looking, one of the reasons I would look to you and your firm is that it's clear from my first work with you, and I've got a strategic plan, that I can pick up the phone, even if you're not on retainer, and say, Um, "Uh uh-oh, Lizzie. (laughs) another mess we're, another fine mess we're in and you would be the kind of person who would calmly carefully sort some things out and suggest a direction call in that sounds good what do i do you see i think i'm here not just to represent the, my vast listening audience for this practice podcast i'm here because you are exhibiting a whole aspect of practice out there in the world of people who are have of great conscience and who have all the right stuff to yeah. accept offers of work and expect to be paid for that work and then to be called back as things progress either to get them to the next level or help them get out of the pothole yeah. uh, and there's just thousands of people out there, Lizzie. And, and 
you have got, you've been candid about the struggle and they're struggling too. So what I'm trying to say is that this is the time when people are really kind of pulling their practices out, looking at them. You know, I've been living in this practice and now I got to look at it. It's got some tatters, some holes. Uh, it's not thick enough and where the bullets, yeah. start, you know, all of that. And then, and, and then sort of putting it back on and becoming more bold uh, and striding out there. But if you never even took the look and f- at your practice, as so many people do, suddenly they're out, they're out of it. No one wants them anymore. And I don't want that to happen to you. You're too wonderful. Well, I hope it won't happen to me. It uh, won't because you're wonderful. Um, but there are, a lot of, there are a lot of companies that I really don't want it to happen to. And yeah, um, I, I push as hard as I can to encourage people to make choices that I feel are going to be effective in the long term. Mm-hmm. In particular, I really do encourage my clients to, and not just my clients, people in my life, family members, friends, when we're talking about this at the dinner table, is to just like, Okay, have your knee jerk reaction to the thing that I'm saying. Like, have it to me. Like, have it in your bedroom, have it somewhere. But then, like, at least pretend that you're open to the idea. Um, just like try to create a little sliver of an opening um, and don't dismiss it out of hand. Uh, in particular, when it comes to talking to your employees, to making making decisions that that they feel proud to stand behind. Um, one, of the, one of the things that's really un- can that word up, um, not thought about enough when you're a marketing strategist is does your marketing plan make people want to work for you? Or are they going to be like, eh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're making nuclear bombs for Russia. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, no. <laughs> so like, you know, you're messaging the world, but you're setting the script for how people internally are going to talk about you. And if you can't get their buy-in, how will you ever convince an outsider <laughs> that your product or service is worthwhile? There's, there's a lot, uh, a lot more that I've learned in this, uh, too short period of uh, time for the recording, Lizzie. But I, uh, I, I have to say that that idea of uh, that you just said that there are lots of businesses out there that you would care about and you wouldn't want to, you know, enter into the harm zone. That feeling is the same as who is your constituency, who is your uh, client population from the nonprofit world we talk about what's our cause well i think you have personally and i think your business named one more thing one more thing and i'll ask that one more time your business has a cause yeah and, it does and that's great it and it'll attract it'll attract people who are running businesses or starting and growing businesses who they just need something fresh and new and they need someone who's really got a sense of you can't find something that I can't wrap my head around or help you wrap your head around. Come at me. This, th- we can work this. That's fantastic. That's a fantastic thing. And I know that you have to watch out how much time it's taken in, whether it's all of that. But if you're not having a, a really growthful, growthful day, day after day, uh, you haven't quite got the customers you want yet, but they're out there. Mm-hmm. I have some of them. Yeah, um, I know. I met at least one. Yeah, and some of them are are you know I, I I've worked with really some really great ones. I'm gonna find some more. I'm going to you know limit my free office hours to the causes I really care about, um, and to the opportunities I think might grow into something. You know, I need like, I need like a, a framework for, am I going to do this work for free? And people need to like, you know, tick a certain number of boxes before I just start spitting ideas out. It's, it's good to know there's something behind the first, your first offering. 
and yeah. that'll that'll come through and and then it, it becomes more of like the the russian doll kind of thing to there's something more in there there's something more in there there's something more in there and uh, i i'm looking forward to seeing how you how you, well, you report back, strategically uh, market it <laughs> i'll report back in my in a couple of months if you want oh um, definitely yeah so we'll do uh, my first 90 minutes session um i'm working really hard to make sure that my client feels that she got her value with those 90 minutes probably mm -hmm. um you know, with this first one, I need to calibrate things a bit. Um, but, you know, hopefully this will be the first of many. And yeah, um, you'll have a really good experience when you book your consult with me. Mm -hmm. And it will be really easy and seamless, similar to the way the webinar we were supposed to attend tonight went, <laughs> except for that the speaker got sick. So, um, <laughs> but I did like that feedback from mm. i will let you go because i know you're a very busy man one more plug and also mention your website i, I mean your email and then when um, we set it up because I, I want people to find you to see if you're as real as you sound i am as real as i sound okay um, but but my my business is called one more thing my name is Lizzie Freudman. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on the internet. Um, you find me on the internet today at one more thing, LLC.com. It might look different in a couple of weeks. Cause like I said, I'm trying to upgrade some of my technology to make it easier. And mm -hmm. I, and I want to add a mission, vision and values page. It's a work in progress. Um, like, like everything. And it is dynamic. It, my my interest in um updating the website and changing my linkedin information and, and whatever um it's ongoing you know it's never going to be perfect i'm never going to have a final draft so you know don't expect it to be the same every time you come that's oh, that's wow. part of the that's part of the authentic lizzie experience that's the authentic and I'm, I'm going to look at that website and i go oh my god that's terrible <laughs> I mean, look right, at, like, <laughs> no lizzie p you know how many trillion restaurants you know if it, it you will come through on that website i haven't even looked at it lately but you will come through and oh. and you know it's it, but you are doing what thousands of people are trying to do they're trying to be found like where's waldo you know in yep. this great huge beach of umbrellas and all kinds of people you are waldo and uh yeah. it's it's a it's a wonderful challenge as long as you can pay your bills <laughs> yeah it is it, i agree i like affirm affirm that comment 10 million times but also I would say that like, you know, the the iterative versions of things is is something I don't know if it's unique to me because I don't know how a lot of other marketing firms work, but I mean I do, not behind closed doors, is that I tend to work with my clients um and try to convince them to view, you know, we make a marketing plan, but we say these are our assumptions and this is how we're gonna test them. Mm -hmm. And my hypothesis is that if we do X, Y, and Z, we're going to, you know, increase our audience or our market share or whatever it is by mm -hmm. this amount, but it's a hypothesis, right? So like yeah. whether we win or lose, we get information. And That's right. so it's always, as far as I'm concerned, a win, maybe it's like the second place, but it's, it's something. And so right. it's important to know that there's an iterative process that you know things can always be improved and that's okay indeed if that iteration were to stop and hold zip the whole world go right by it whether it's you or a company or a nation zip you you just can't stay stay still very long and if they've got to be told flat out if if they are going to be someone who's going to be working with you yeah we're going to come take a look at this six months eight months let's look at it as an experiment uh and but not a gamble it's a difference 
An experiment. Yeah, you have an hypothesis. Experiment, not a gamble. A yeah. hypothesis. You control for as many variables as you can. Right. And you try try to see which of the you know options is the one that creates the results that you want. Is it mm -hmm. increasing your ad spend? Is it going on a different channel? Mm -hmm. Is it changing your brand voice? Is it getting different graphics? Mm -hmm. What is? And what if you're? What if you know you're not hitting your your target, but you've stumbled upon the fact that instead of selling more things to the same number of people, you're selling the same number of things, but to more people. So like maybe, maybe you can go in that direction instead and increase your profits that way. So, you know, there's just a lot of. Yeah. It actually sounds like an adventure. It is. It's fun <laughs> to do that when people are, are willing to come along. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much, Lizzie, for this. Uh, there's only a few crumbs left on that plate that uh, you really shouldn't have to eat it. It was it was not <laughs> your mistake. Thank you very much, Lisa. Well, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to try again and to keep working on my own presentation, which is definitely um, top of mind this year. So thank you. you got it. And if you'd like to hear more, listen in on Spotify, Automatic, and Apple Podcasts. Or go to inactionresearch.com slash podcasts page. And if you'd like to learn more about social inaction and the nature of practice, head over to inactionresearch.com for more information. Thank you for supporting this show. We look forward to hearing from you soon.